Hey, Stephen Downs is in the house. Oh, hello, Stephen Downs. So does uh, the Hangouts include a, a whiteboard of some sort? Yes. With you have, the um, extras. Yes, with extras. And, you know, it's still a little bit buggy. It's, it's not perfect. We had a, a crash uh, during the EVO webcast. But, you know, we were also talking about how far and quickly things have come. You know, now we complain, oh, this free tool that's letting us talk to people <laughs> from all over the world crash, and I had to start it again. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing how quickly we get used to things and then start cranking about yeah. them, uh, especially when they're free. I yeah. mean, you know, come <laughs> on. <laughs> well, at least they're not coming out of our pocketbook. I don't know about free. Uh, there's a certain yeah, amount of value attached to data. And and we're the product for Google at the end of the day, isn't it? So. Exactly. Right. Hello, Hello Stephen, Stephen Downs. Hello. Happy New Hello. Year to you. Check you Thank out. You. It's good. a good year. You just come right in. Your audio is fine. Yeah, I came in with a few hitches, but I clicked on the link that you posted in the chat, and it turned the chat all blank, and nothing else happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I haven't figured out how to target to a new window for those links in the new chat. Yeah. But I figured that one out pretty quickly. And uh, hello, Karen. That's a very yellow room. <laughs> it is. You'd think it would be pink because my light bulb is pink. Oh, oh. interesting color switch there. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've just been rambling. Any uh, topics on cool Yeah, stuff I have a question for Stephen. Yes. yes. Are you going to go from change 11 to change 12? Uh, yes. yes. Short answer. Oh, oh, wait. No, change 11 to 12? Uh I don't know. I haven't yet. <laughs> because change 12 change is going to start, well, is there going to be a change 12? And if so, that would start next fall, right? Yeah. I have no idea whether there would be another one next fall. I mean, I never know about these things until the last minute, which is fine. I work better that way. Well, anyways. really, when you have a 45-week <laughs> course, you could just call it change and take a, you know, there a you long go. break. <laughs> yeah, but change, you don't really want change to be your hashtag no. No. <laughs> change forever yeah <laughs> yeah change without change <laughs> so karen i don't think we've connected before uh what where, where are you at no um doug simington told me i should uh check things out here and do you have a snuggie on um, I have a house coat on because I just crawled out of bed. With my headboard behind me. <laughs> where Where are you, Karen? In my bedroom. No, I mean geographically located. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that. I'm in Calgary. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, don't go outside if you're in Calgary. The temperature's changing. <laughs> no, it just snowed last night too. It was, uh, I think, it was 11 degrees yesterday. <laughs> I think it's a bit less like today. <laughs> oh, I love Calgary weather. I remember Calgary weather. You go out and sh you go outside in shirt sleeves, and you come back home in a parka. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. a lovely analogy. Yeah, it's accurate. It's not an analogy. That's what happens. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. it's totally true. And what causes that? What what phenomenon, uh, meteorological phenomenon, causes that? The weather. Probably the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Can't blame it on El Nino or anything like that, or La Nina. So, what's new in your world, Stephen? What have you been focusing on? Well, the change course obviously uh, has occupied a fair amount of my time. You know, and just sort of messing around with grasshopper behind the scenes to make it a bit more efficient so people have less troubles with it than carol did just kidding <laughs> carol um so and of course you know just doing the the regular weekly stuff with the course uh it's it's a constant source of interest to me that course you know we had Doug, douglas rushkoff last week we've got two people this week 
I'm just trying to remember their names, and of course I've forgotten them already, but they'll be right on the home page of the course here. So if I stall, I'll learn immediately that it's Valerie Irvine and Julianne <laughs> Toad talking about uh, the 21st century university. So, you know, I mean, that's that's going to be interesting. They, they've got a live session going tomorrow that uh, I should be able to attend. Uh, my schedule sometimes impinges. I've been learning a lot of French recently. Oh, and how um, is that coming? Uh, ça va bien. Ça va vraiment bien. Uh, J'apprends bien le français. Je peux le parler facilement. Uh, Ooh, facile. Ooh. Ça sera nécessaire parce que j'ai une uh, réunion à ici. À, à, à assister <laughs> le, le, fre, uh, le 2 février. Uh, où je dois faire une lecture, en, uh, faire une uh, présentation en français. Où est là? Wow, you're going to uh, present in French? Ed, uh, Ed, Edmondston, Nouveau Brunswick. Ce sera mon ah. première <laughs> présentation en français. Dieu, bonne chance. Merci beaucoup. I still have a lot of French to learn before I can pull it off in not very much time. But I've been working really hard at it. Uh, it's a good time, uh, you know, we're sort of here at the NRC in a little bit of a stasis uh, as things change, so it's a good time to, to spend some time learning French and to, you know, uh, just prepare for the next round of stuff that we're going to be doing. So uh, NRC is the National Research Council of Canada or something like that? Yes, that's where I work. What's going on there? Uh, well, it's uh, NRC is going through what they call uh, a process of renewal, and they're changing the entire institute structure into a program structure, which means everything that we have been doing is being wrapped up, and then everybody will be launched into new programs. It's not even certain that there will be an e-learning program yet, although I expect there probably will be, uh, if only because there's a number of e-learning people here. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a period of big uncertainty for the NRC, just as it is for any government organization. We're certainly not unique in uh, any academic organization, for that matter. We're not immune to the changes sweeping the world, obviously. So we're all preparing for this new program structure. Uh, some are preparing by waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it's people like you know the the higher levels aren't quite sure where they want to go yet, or if they are sure, they haven't told us yet. So, you know, there is an aspect of waiting, but you know, also too, you know, the the work goes on developing, you know, MOOCs. Um, I've, do I've do you have any kind of team work. like like? I think of Stephen Downs as sort of his own ministry in the Canadian government somehow. Like, do you ever go to go to an office and sit in a, a cubicle or anything, Stephen? I'm in my office. Okay. This is my office. Uh, look around. See, there, see, there's some pictures. There are my and fluorescent friends. lights. That's a sure sign it's an office. Fluorescent, fluorescent lights and a, and a fake ceiling, right? Do you have coworkers? Uh, so, I do have coworkers. They're well, they're outside that door. Uh, oh, there's my wall. And uh, what's neat about that wall is it's a whiteboard. So oh, I what's love it. On it. That's cool. So I like that. And How I far from you is Rita? Rita is probably about 40 or 50 feet. Uh -huh. uh, not, not far at all. Uh, there's my view outside the window. There's my little Buddha. Uh, no snow? To, to Tibetan Buddha. No, no, look at that. Eh? Isn't that outstanding? Wow. Just the dusting on the ground. That's, That's called it. climate change. That's called climate change, and there's more of my office and me. And I'll get up and wrap this. I'll turn around. So, yeah, I'm in my office. I do have colleagues. Um, again, as we work in more of a project based approach, I'll work more and more with these colleagues. Although I, I've done a lot of work with them in the past. Uh, we had the Synergique project, which was a development project for Desire to Learn. There was a great big group of us. Now, uh, you know, I don't watch about that, but, you know, it's part of the job. Uh, so, Stephen, I don't know if you know Ben. But, uh, this, is, this is Ben, Stephen. Uh, okay. He just came back Hello. from a, a Blackboard conference uh, uh -huh. where they were talking about how they're really encouraging openness and things like that. And I was asking Ben to kind of 
share the virtues of Blackboard and stuff. Have mm-hmm. your feel, and I remember, because you, you and a few others were people we had on back in the, the patent attack days. Has your feelings yeah. toward Blackboard changed at all in terms of, of the tool and its, its functionality and its openness and or the company and its ethics? No. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, nothing has happened to change it, right? Uh, there, there have been some some minor movements toward openness, but I mean, they, they haven't done anything like open source or software. Uh, their, their business strategy, from my admittedly at a distance perspective, seems to be uh, directed toward creating Blackboard as a marketplace for commercial learning resources and they'll, they'll allow some openness in there but their focus is on making arrangements with the publishers and they need to do that from their position because their main competition is going to come from these same publishers like McGraw-Hill and Pearson and etc yeah. who are in the process of launching their own learning management systems and they're also kind of squeezed on the other side from things like personal learning environments and there isn't a, per, a commercial PLE out there yet. Might be sometime still. Who knows what it would look like? But there's going to be pressure uh, from informal learning, from PLEs, from that sort of approach. And then, of course, the whole concept of a MOOC is like a total challenge to the LMS approach. So, but Blackboard continues down the, the LMS path, the, the resources based path, the, the you know, the traditional institution-based education path and, and that's, you know, when, when, you, you, when you pursue that path, there's a, there's a whole sort of ethos that goes with it and that, that hasn't changed over the years for Blackboard, nor would I expect it to. They haven't been quite as litigious lately, have they? I haven't saw, seen any recent patent claims. They were probably paying off their last one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's... You know, I mean, it, it's a gamble when you, when you go to court. I mean, Blackboard ultimately lost the case against D2L, and uh, they ended up paying money. Um, you know, I mean, the D2L won, and it was an unambiguous win for them. Uh, you know, I mean, that's a risk. Blackboard put a lot of money into that lawsuit. I, I think the amount of money spent litigating was probably greater than the $3 million that they were tentatively awarded by the lower court, which and they didn't even get that. So you know, you, you go into court and come out with a loss, not a good business strategy. So you know, they looked at that twice, and they should. You know. There's a lot of stuff that the open source community did first in the LMS world, and it makes it really hard to to sit on a patent and make it stick. So what could What's you put, happened oh, sorry. with? Oh, sorry. No, you go, Carol. I was wondering, does anybody know what happened with Big Blue Button? <laughs> they still exist, and they existed in the MOOC for the first couple of weeks. Um, yeah, um, it wasn't. I mean, Big Blue Button isn't good for a huge online event. Uh, I think it's probably perfectly good for a conversation, although not as good as this Hangout, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because he uses Flash for audio, and Flash plus audio equals bad sound quality. Um, but uh, so with you know, HTML5, with HTML5, do you foresee anything coming up that can be used by MOOCs? Well, the problem with flash and audio isn't the output. I mean, you get great audio output from things like, uh, you know, YouTube. It's the input, and I don't think. And correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think HTML5 defines an audio input format or, mm-hmm. or mechanism or system. Uh, Illuminate uses Java. Uh, I don't know what Google Hangout uses, but I'm pretty sure it's not Flash because uh, I get nothing. Uh, there's a Google Talk client, I think, gets installed, but I'm not sure exactly how it works. But again, that's how they circumvent the problems with flash input audio. And you have to do that. Uh, I've just never seen good audio capture using flash. Mm-hmm. Jeff, you've had a lot of experience with this. And probably yeah, I mean, Google Talk is using their little Google Talk plugin, and Skype uses their proprietary stuff. And right. it works a lot better than yeah. 
the other stuff. Yeah. Um, and if so, if what is what are those books based on, though, Jeff? You know, I don't know anything about the Google Talk plugin. I I don't think it's open or anything. Uh, you just and Skype, same thing. They're yeah. both proprietary. Yeah, proprietary. You know, the, the what was I forget the name. There was like an open telephony client back in the day, five or six years ago. Uh, was it Gizmo that was open? Gizmo Project. Okay, uh, that sounds familiar. But that never quite uh, gained much traction. Uh, but I mean, there's got to be huge money in this. I mean, this, you know, yeah. you think back in the day of telecoms, you know, we used to pay $2 a minute to talk to the other side of the planet. You know, we talked to lots <laughs> of people for free all the time. <laughs> yeah. um, and, you know, I'm, I'm sure at some point Google will want to monetize this to some extent. And, you know, I've got no problem paying extra for premium features. But in the meantime, I'm certainly enjoying Well, but again, they're, they're gathering lots of data. And the data, they certainly yeah. will monetize the data. Yeah, I'm fine yeah. with that. So hopefully if we just keep feeding them data, it'll stay <laughs> free. <Yeah. laughs> keep feeding the monster and it'll keep giving us free video conferencing. <laughs> For 10. <laughs> yeah. For 10, yeah. Now, so, now maybe they I'm would... Sorry. They would um, Offered for more than ten for a fee. Maybe who knows? Who knows? So if a it's university came to you, I, I want to get back to the Blackboard issue. If a university came to you and said, "Gosh, we we hear what you're saying about Blackboard. That doesn't sound like the way to go." But you know, we need something to mm -hmm. help our teachers who maybe are you know still adjusting to this new crazy world of of openness and everything. What would your recommendations be? Moodle. Moodle works. Uh, it's an easy install. Uh, you, you can um, support it with basic PHP and scripting skills, which means you, you don't need you know a, a PhD to run the thing. Although Ben's university looked at Moodle, and why didn't they go with it, Ben? Yeah, they decided it was actually would cost more to uh, to support it than just paying the Blackboard license. Yeah, uh, that could be. It, it could well be. Uh, if if you do it on a purely cost basis, uh, in some cases, in some environments, Moodle might cost more. It depends on what you're trying to do with it, right? Uh, you know, we we ran uh, we ran Moodle for our connectivism courses, the, the first few, and it cost us a little bit because we took a little bit of time to install it, but basically, it didn't cost us a dime. Right, but you know we're we're doing a pretty out of the box kind of application of Moodle, and the more custom work you do, the more a system like this is going to cost you money. Uh, you know, especially you know, like if you're, if you're in an institution, and you're doing really uh, you know high overhead things like integrating with a student information system. Uh, you know, Blackboard is going to do a lot of that stuff out of the box for you, or or it'll come with. You know the the license price and the installation support. Moodle, you got to hire someone, bring them in, train them, and figure it out for yourself. And there's there's more overhead there. See, and I'm some, still waiting for the knows. Google LMS. I think that would be awesome if Google came with an LMS that also you know people when they produce their content they could do it on a blog. They could own their content after the course because that's my biggest problem with Moodle and Blackboard is whatever happens in the course stays in the course and when that student is no longer enrolled they yeah. have no access to it uh, and that it's really hard to to aggregate that content outside of the LMS. I think Google could do that. Heck, they could even host it and provide support and just pay for it with ads. I don't mind Google ads in my LMS. Does, does uh -huh. Drupal have a, a portfolio feature that could be integrated? Drupal? Drupal. Uh, Drupal, not Moodle. Not properly so no, called. I, I've been working quite a bit with Drupal over the last couple of weeks because I'm launching something called Moncton Free Press just for the fun of it. Uh, it's my evenings and weekend project. I haven't seen a portfolios thing for Drupal, but I wouldn't be surprised if it exists. There's thousands of modules. Mm -hmm. There's an advanced profile module, which is robust but never quite ripe, which happens with a lot of these open source stuff. Also, Karen, I wanted to get back to you and let you know that I muted you uh, back when you were creating some rustling noises, but feel free to unmute yourself anytime you want to chime in. Uh, 
And we also don't know what you do, Karen, aside from, you know, wake up in Calgary. You're still muted. You have to unmute yourself. I'm an artist. An Some artist. Days. Some days. Some days I'm autistic, so. Depend. <laughs> Depend. What is your medium? Um, I, I do watercolor paintings is my main thing, as well as mixed media. And then I also do a lot of sewing, so fiber work. I do recycled clothing, actually. So what are you doing hanging out with a bunch of EdTech geeks like us? How much are we boring you? Well, my my true love is Doug Symington, and so uh, you can imagine how much of this tech stuff I've been exposed to. And so um, I've just recently come up with a line of anti-bullying dolls that I want to get into the education system, and I'm quite passionate about that. So um, this kind of just seems like something that's a natural fit, and I should just check it out and wrap my brain around it. Anti-bullying dolls. Tell us more. Yeah, well, I wish I had a couple of them that were up here. Um, I'm I'm an avid recycler, so I've taken all these interior design sample fabrics, and I've made these really, really quirky dolls out of them. Uh, they're called Curly Shirley, Swerve and Mervin, and Just Ethel, and I purchased the <laughs> JustEthel.com site. So Doug's going to help me build a website for them. And um, I want to do some circle discussions within the school system about bullying and being true to yourself and standing up to people that aren't um, a positive influence. And so I think if I can do that in real time, why not be able to do it online as well and, and get kids using computers to talk about bullying and kind of get a global brigade fighting that, the bullying. Right on. Yeah. So that's why I'm here, to Spe figure out how this stuff works. Speaking of bullying, we had an issue at EdTech Talk a few hours ago that was uh, fairly uncommon. We had, um, during a, a webcast, I wasn't, it was another show. Uh, and there was a guest who has his project and a whole bunch of people who had a lot of complaints about this person and how he managed his project and dealt with financial things were there and complaining a lot. And, wow. Um, it, you, know, it, you know, we've had the occasional rogue crazy person who goes nuts and you ban them from the chat room, but this was a group of people making substantive complaints. Uh, and it kind of got shut down, and uh, you know, that's the prerogative of, of the show host. But it kind of, um, you know, they said we're we're committed to positive discussion. But I, you know, and EdTech Talk needs to talk about this as a community. But I feel like we're committed to civil, authentic conversation. And if it's not positive, so be it. I I would rather, you know, and if if I were in that guy's position and there was a chat room full of people complaining about me. I would have been much more inclined to respond, but had our little ed tech talk drama today. Wow. Yeah, now we don't want to know who. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll have to go check the ed tech talk yeah. archives, edtechtalk.com. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. You have archives. You forgot. <laughs> okay. Hey, well, it's an interesting I issue, for sure. Yeah, it was. Uh, I, I did a show at Christmas time, and it was interesting. There was people that came by and they had kids that had problems with um, bullying, but there was a number of adults. Like one one woman said she actually had to go to court and have restraining orders done against somebody that actually, for about three or four year, la years, made her life impossible. And actually got quite teary at our booth. And, and I met someone recently at a conference who was a very active person in social media and he committed Twitter side. And he was a really, I mean, he had thousands of followers and stuff, but he was getting so harassed by someone uh, that he, he really closed off a lot of his social media. So it's, you know, we, we think of cyberbullying with kids, but it certainly happens at all levels. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's employed as a deliberate strategy. Uh, you you want to shut someone down, that's what you do. Yeah. And it's very wearing on people. Have you seen any of that in any of the uh, the MOOCs that you've been in, Stephen? Uh, 
we in CCJ08 we had some issues uh, with some disruptive people, and uh, it was it was interesting. The way we dealt with that was to move stuff off the Moodle forum, um, and to encourage people to post their comments and their opinions on their own website, which was a direction I was always in favor of anyway, so it was actually kind of convenient. But, you know, it, it's a, it became a totally different circumstance where it's a lot harder to impose your will over 170 uh, different blogs than over one Moodle forum. And, and so that, that's how we dealt with that. I've seen, seen that kind of behavior all over the net, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's... it's you know, it's it's on a massive scale, and I remember it's reading epidemic. You know, the the change eleven uh, president or last week was Howard Rheingold, and I remember reading yeah. in his book way back when about the well, and that was like mm -hmm. one of the first significant issues they had was this you know uh, uh, troublesome member of the community and how to deal with it. Yeah, I heard someone saying just uh, just the other day about a uh, real relationship between uh, trolling though and and um, uh, anonymity. And that you know, their opinion was that once you people have their you know real identity of some sort that they're talking from, a lot of the trolling and that you know negative or I don't know what kind of disruptive I guess kind of comments go away. But I mean, these examples you're talking about were were examples where people weren't anonymous. Yeah, I, I, yeah. it might affect the quantity, but it doesn't affect the phenomenon itself. I mean, a lot of people don't care. So so people know who they are; they'll still go on with it. Yeah. yeah. Then it's then it's sort of a group a group effort to shut them down or ignore them. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the worst situation is when you have a group doing it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's true. And, and and that's that's the most serious case, right? And then there's no risk to the bulliers, right? Because there's like five, ten, sure. whatever of them, and power they're all after numbers. one person. There's power in numbers. I think the power in numbers is more likely to create pervasive bullying than anonymity. And the technology is very vulnerable in terms of like tagging. You know, you can hijack a tag really easily. Oh yeah. Which isn't exactly bullying, but it's pollution. Yeah. I I could easily imagine like if somebody had a grudge against George and I, uh, they just flood change eleven tags with I don't know links to uh, unsavory websites, shall you say? And that would offend, effectively render that tag useless, you know. And and they could disrupt, you know, any Twitter communications. Uh, it wouldn't be hard. It's surprising that it hasn't been done, uh, but I'm sure it is done to other tags, and I'm sure it is done to other people. Well, I mean, that leaves you with, with the hope that maybe you can figure out what the underlying. You know, sort of. Call. I mean, maybe sometimes it's just somebody with some sort of psychological problem, but sometimes there might be an underlying issue or something that can be facilitated or mediated and dealt with. But yeah, I don't think I want to know that much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I see it employed just to shut the person up, and I see it employed often as a deliberate strategy by organized groups, and, and we're going to do this to shut the person up, and and there are. You know, some really trivial, like like Juan Cole, for example, is a blogger who writes a lot on Middle Eastern issues. And he's very well versed and, and very knowledgeable about the area, and therefore he gets attacked by large groups of people who intend simply to shut him up. And they've done things like try to uh, deny uh, promotions and his and and other appointment related things at the university where he works. Uh, that sort of thing. Kathy Sierra is a classic example of somebody who was just set upon by a group of people who just didn't like the fact that she was female and outspoken. You know, she's competition in this area of the globosphere, so you just shut her down. And, and you do it that way because you can. And, and it was ultimately successful. And you can't negotiate with that. You know, there, there isn't a mediation path with a group of people who are trying to shut you up. That, that's why it's, uh, it's, it's it's such a concern. Yeah, I was going to bring up faculty bullying, and you just did. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Stephen. Yeah, well, and that's that's the same sort of thing that can happen. You know, and 
let's be clear too this has always happened it's just on the internet it's easier and a little bit more out there but you know faculty bullying i mean i saw faculty bullying long before there was a world wide web it still happened that's the thing it's just I think easier to follow has, now the web has exacerbated the the bit bullying issue right it used to be i think a little bit more centralized where it would happen in one place and then someone could go home but the internet is available to us all the time and so it's ex expanded from not just faculty but online and not just the schoolyard but online and facebook has made it terrible i think for a lot of kids and stuff so or an adult adults too yeah. it depends on your background i grew up in a small town uh, it, it was Me pervasive. Too. There's no, you know, once the group decides, there is no escape. You know, right. it, it, you cannot get away from it. And you know, when when the whole town decides, you know, it it enters into your room and catches up with you. Totally. It's just faster now that we have the electronic medium. Well, that's a lot faster, sure. And I, and I, widespread, more widespread. And, and uh, it's different in nature, too. Uh, you know, I mean, one of the good things about it is, is you know, online bullying at least isn't physical assaults. This mm -hmm. is good. You know, it doesn't mean that it's harmless, but it, it does mean that people aren't getting beaten up over the Internet. So, I mean, that's good. Mm. Like I said, I grew up in a small town. <laughs> uh, small, small towns are rough, rough environment to grow up in. And you've hung your boxing gloves up, right? Yep. <laughs> but I needed them. Yeah, now you have darts. That could be even more left lethal. So yeah. I have a question for all of you that's not related to bullying. Um, I've just signed up for the Becoming a Webhead class, and it's my first one that I'm, I'm doing. What, how can I get the most out of it? Because right now I'm getting a ton of emails. The um, first thing you want to do is digest your Yahoo mail. So you get one one email a day with and I a did long that. list. Um, just embrace the chaos. Skim. Skim. Don't feel like you have to digest everything. Um, Find the things that catch your attention and go with it, or the people Filter. that you want to connect with yeah. and try to connect with them. Yeah. Pick and choose. What's relevant to you is relevant. What isn't, isn't. And, and focus on, on the things you find interesting or worthwhile or useful and ignore the rest. Yeah, because if you don't filter, you'll go absolutely nuts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just seems like there's so much, and I'm just like, oh my God, how am I going to wrap my brain around this one? And also put your stuff out there. And let people yeah. who want to connect with you connect with you. I say, okay. hey, this is who I am. This is why I'm here. This is what I'm interested in. Here's mm -hmm. my stuff. And if you get two people who are interested, then those are going to be the valuable connections. Right. And those okay. are the people you focus on. Right. 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 Yeah, filtering is such an important literacy. Right. So it becomes authentic to what I need. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Karen, have you ever worked in a, have you ever taken a MOOC? No. I I don't what what is the MOOC? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the webhead thing except with a whole bunch of different sources. Okay. <laughs> it, it, you, it you need to embrace chaos at first. Then you need to filter and then you can go back and expand a little bit more. Yeah, and and don't expect to like get everything and be okay. Now I'm caught up. Yeah, now I'm ready no. for chapter two. That is yeah. that's not how it works. Yeah, no, I was I was trying to get Doug to give me a little bit of an overhead of what I'm supposed to do. He's just like, get in there, just get in there, <laughs> <laughs> and then, just jump and then, in. And then about twenty minutes later into our conversations, it's maybe you should just you know not do it. <laughs> but but things like this happen because of that you wound up here and you're talking to people on all over the place and yeah. having a conversation and that's yeah. cool yeah. McCarran you did watercolors the first time yeah. you tried watercolor what happened I was an expert <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> think of it as a new form of watercolor okay right. okay yeah, that's a good way of looking at good it good analogy yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, well, it is coming up to 1.30 a.m. here in Korea, and I teach at 9 a.m., so I'm thinking for the sake of my students, I should probably wrap this up fairly soon. Yeah, uh, you need you need your rest. I yes. really appreciate well, you starting Jeff, again. Um, I've heard tons of things about you, so it was really nice to put a face to the name. A pleasure Very to nice virtually to meet you. Meet you. And uh, we'll we'll have to. Do you have a, a Twitter account? I'll, I'll we'll we'll socially media connect. Yes, I'm at ParentScarlet dot com. So or check you out. You've got your own domain. Yeah. You've got, uh, well, you've got, got a, some yeah, geek got skills, a few. artist I'm a, girl. I'm a, I'm a domain before a little bit. I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. you're I'm, talking. Uh, a, if, if any of you want to connect with me, I'm at ParentScarlet on Twitter. Good, you can teach me some watercolor lessons. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Well, nice chatting with you all. Yeah, Always good to see everybody. Thank you, Jeff. Happy, healthy New Year to you all. Enjoy the final uh, days of the year of the... Oh, God, I forgot what year it is, but the Year of the Dragon's coming up the just bunny. a couple of weeks away. So year you're, you're on next week and then off, right, Jeff? Yeah. <clears throat> maybe one, at least yeah. one more week, maybe two uh, okay. And then off for a few weeks. Okay. Well, see you next time around. Thank Sounds you. Sounds great. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.